All right, dudes, we're gonna start in three, two, one. Yo, what's like going on, man? Welcome to the number one rising podcast in this wonderful city, dude. It's it's Vibe Check Podcast, man, with your host Steven, aka Surfer, dude. I'm not even gonna lie, man. Today's been like a jam-packed day. We already got one about the bullying event that's coming up from Noodle Exchange, man. But now we're gonna get into the heart of today's podcast day, man. It's gonna be great. I'm here with Daisy, the owner of Ulu Cafe, man. We're gonna be talking about, you know, how she started off, man. You know what I mean? And then we're gonna get into the juice of the meat and all that stuff, man. I'd like to thank Daisy for coming out here. Uh, so Daisy, like, I'm not gonna start off with the first question, man. Like, what was like your beginnings, man? Like, what was that, like that like, man? Oh boy. Well, back in my day. <laughs> many moons ago um well i moved here from utah um my mother was not the greatest she kind of uh went around trying to be she was a starving artist which like i give her a lot of praise for trying but um she fell into the partying after and kind of got addicted to coke and she just uh kind of fell off the track so i would spend my summers with my grandma um, they were the best time of my life. Uh, when I finally got away from my mom and I just got to be able to spend time with my grandma, she was way more grounded and like down to earth than my own mother. Um, so she would teach me how to bake, how to make handmade ice cream, and she would also make these tiny little candies. I cannot perfect them. I am still trying to get the recipe just right. So I have not even attempted um to share them with anyone else other than like myself when i'm trying to just play play in my kitchen work on recipes and stuff so um, trying to say is Le- the, the broski leroy doesn't even have any of these cookies dude no no he i don't he doesn't even know about it. nobody knows about these actually it's the first time i'm saying it actually yeah it's the first time i've i've really told anybody about it all right man so like uh so so, okay, dude, like, uh, let's continue the story, man. Let's, uh, let's get into the juice of the deep meat, man. Let's go on, man. But, yeah, uh, so basically, my, my, when my grandmother passed away in 2018, I wanted to carry on her legacy. So I finally decided I wanted to get away from my mother, and I moved away. And I moved here, and I tried my hardest to open up a business that I could share what my grandma taught me with the with this with uh the citizens of los santos Alrighty, man it's like uh so my question that comes into you for the background of you coming around man uh how did you like you know acquire like what was the journey like uh with ulu cafe like the beginning journey of uh trying to you know let's i'm trying to think of, like the what mainlanders call like jump start your uh ulu cafe uh journey man well, we didn't. I didn't start as Ulu Cafe, actually. Um, I started as Cherry Popper back in. Hold on. Uh, oh, I put my notes over there. Hold on one second. Okay. Uh, the I was trying to find this because I didn't even. I don't even remember the first day that we had opened at Cherry Popper. But back in, I believe it was 2020, I moved here, I believe, if I have the time right. And um, basically, I wanted to share my grandma treats with everybody. So I noticed in the city, uh, when I moved here, there was no, there was no um, sweets or treats or anything like that. There was, uh, there was Burger Shot, there was a... Um, a very nice uh, sushi restaurant, Rising Sun, I believe is what it's called. Other people call it Setting Sun. Uh, there was there was many names going on. Um, but there wasn't anything that someone could go and get, like, a treat to treat themselves, celebrate a birthday, celebrate something. I always wanted to, I don't know. I like things sweet, so I, I wanted to share that. Um, well, we started with Cherry Popper. I had put in a, I noticed after there was no treats, I put in a proposal uh, to open my own business. I wanted to start it as an ice cream truck um, because I figured that would be an easy way to easily get 
with uh, with the citizens and drive around where, where I'm needed or where sweeps are needed. Just take it with me. Um, so I put in a request or a proposal. Um, I had my recipes. I had everything that I wanted. Um, I shared with my grandma's recipes. I brought them tastes to try. Um, and I hadn't heard anything. It was it, 10 months past. And I honestly thought they hated my idea. I thought they just didn't, uh, I don't know. I thought that sweets weren't a necessity, which I was totally fine with. I was like, okay, that's fine. Well, I guess after, shortly after, I was like, okay, I'll just uh, continue working at the vineyard because that's where I spent a lot of my time working was up at El Marlo Vineyard um, when I had first moved here. Um, and I received an email stating that my proposal was, I don't know if you call it accepted, approved, I don't know the, the correct term for that, but basically I received the permit to be allowed to, um, to work on selling what I would like to sell. And they told me not only would I get an ice cream truck, I would be more than welcome to have a storefront if I had wished. I about cried when I heard news that it was actually going through and that construction was going to be started. I was through the roof. I was so excited that I would finally be able to like live, like share with people my grandmother's legacy that she left when she taught me how to make all the treats and sweets. And I only hope that I could like do her proud, you know, considering. I had nobody else left. She was she was my rock. She was my Yeah, everything. dude. I get no, it's it's totally understandable, man. It's just like it's just um, you know, I'm passing along, man. It's like it sounds like super radical. But yeah. Uh next question like, you know, to go off of like, you know, as you said, talking about, you know, you just receiving, you know, of getting the storefront with the food uh what was like, you know, what was the beginning like, dude, when you were with uh, the business you were talking, you said Cherry Popper, if I'm not wrong? How was yep, like, how cherry was that, popping. was that like, you know, successful in the beginning, or was it a struggle, you know? Um, honestly, any business is a struggle, but if you put the footwork in, and you put the work in, and you, hours and hours, people, and you start, you, you stand there, you get one customer a day, but that doesn't matter, as long as you get one to me, that's a million. So I, I love it. I just love that I can at least make one person have a smile on their face. So in the beginning, it was hard. I, I had myself. I had my best friend, Lexi. Um, her and I, we would open up uh, Cherry Popper together. Um, just her and me, which we had so much fun. And then the more we opened, the more um, hype got about it, the more people learned about my slushies, the more people learned about the ice cream at the time that I sold. Um, I didn't get approved quite yet just for my my um, cakes, but I did get approved to do the handmade ice cream and stuff. And then the slushies were an added suggestion from um, from corporate state or government, excuse me, stating that I should also try to serve something that would be thirst quenching. And I absolutely love slushies. Absolutely love them. Blue raspberry, my favorite. Tropical, my favorite. Um, so the startup was very, very long, but very rewarding long term because Cherry Popper had become a place in the community that people could come hang out. We had events. We would do games. We would um, giveaways. Um, body i miss him i haven't seen him in a minute but he would he created the brain freeze challenge how many slushies you can drink in one sitting and it was a lot of fun i miss it I wow dude that do. seems kind of that seems kind of cold man Alrighty, man so uh so i'm not gonna lie dudes i've asked this question before i think probably a couple other broskies but uh what 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 uh I remember you telling me about this like a long this was probably like back like two months ago or whatever. So uh how did how did you uh th this is the main question that probably most broskies are probably gonna ask you. How did you uh, acquire so many uh cats for uh cat cafe dude? I'm just I'm just wondering oh, dude because okay. I remember the story a little bit but uh, I just need you know, to like you know refresh you and I think the audience might uh be uh curious about it you know yeah of course okay so back when i 
when we were Cherry Popper and we were down on 518 Haywick Ave, um, I felt lonely um, when I would be in my ha in my house, so I decided I wanted to adopt a cat. I adopted Mr. Mittens, who I shortly after um, he he wouldn't he didn't like to be home alone, so I thought I would find I will just bring him with me to Cherry Popper. And of course, I made sure none of his hair or anything got in the food. It's very sanitary. But um, he started coming with me on the daily. And I was like, well, if you're coming here every day, you might as well be a manager. I might as well pay you. So, And he has helped me so much since I had given him the manager position uh, with Cherry Popper. Um, come to find, it was probably two months Two months after I start, he started coming to work with me, and he get, he got his manager position. Um, there was a stray cat that would continuously eat out of the the garbage bins in the back of Cherry Popper. I'd come out there, there'd be a total mess. It would be all over the place, and I, it took me a while to realize what it was that was making the mess. It was a cat. Um, she was pretty rough looking, um, obviously homeless, um, didn't seem like it had an owner. I did ask around to see if anyone had lost a cat. No one said they lost a cat, so I decided to take her in. And that shortly became part of our family, shortly after, is Miss Raven, which she didn't like to be left home alone either, and she said, she insisted of coming with, because Mr. Mittens got to go, so why didn't she? So um, I thought, if she's also going to be here, she needs a position. She is head of HR. She has been wonderful. Uh, she takes all of the customers' complaints. She takes all suggestions. And if there's any uh, co-worker issues, uh, she handles it immediately. And she's a great mediator, honestly. Like, I don't know how I'd run, how I would have written Cherry Popper without her. But fast forward. Um, due to the whole recession and everything, there was... Um, some issues and I did have to do a rebranding and some reconstruction. We did lose the storefront of Cherry Popper, unfortunately. So um, I had, I was away traveling for like, I want to say it was two and a half weeks, two and a half weeks I was away. I came back and Miss Raven um, was with litter, if you will. Um, Apparently, my the coworkers, the manager and HR, ha didn't even file any paperwork. Didn't even let me know. I was under the impression that they were strictly coworkers, you know, because we have paperwork for that. If anyone in within the company is dating one another, there's a form you fill out. Well, they didn't fill this form out. They were not platonic, Stephen. No, they weren't. That's they, like uh, not that they were romantically uh. involved, and. Uh, so I, I didn't really know what to do. Um, I had planned, my plan was having two cats, which two cats had turned into, we have 32 currently right now here. <laughs> That's kind of crazy. Oh yeah, and just so you know, probably like halfway through this, I'm not even gonna lie to you, you guys are like, why is there so many meow? Well, actually we are at the storefront and uh, we, we thought this would be the most appropriate thing for, uh, you know, Ulu Cafe to, you know, be surrounded by uh, the Ulu cats. Because, to be fair, man, like, they're part of the staff team, too. So, you know, want to oh, make yes. sure of uh, Ulu. So, might as well have them involved as well and give a couple meows, you know. So. We had to uh, continue the story on uh, the paperwork that you were saying. Something about, like, the cats. But, yeah, they did not file the proper paperwork. So these um, platonic individuals that I had left to manage things uh, were romantically involved, and they kept it from me for a very long time, Stephen, like over a year. <laughs> I had no idea. No idea. Right under my nose, they were involved. And uh, they once they had kittens, I... I didn't have the heart to um, to give them away or, or to find new homes for them. I was like, you know what, fine. With the new construct, it just so happened to be very convenient. With the new um, with the uh, new construction here and the larger building that I was being told that was being uh, built after the blueprints were showed to me, 
I I was like, this is how could this be more perfect? How could this be absolutely more perfect? Because let me tell you, I at the time I, I had an apartment that I was living in and it was getting a little crowded when I was keeping all the kittens there. And um, there was just not enough space at Cherry Popper for them either. Um, so I was like, this is perfect. I will just get a permit and make sure that, of course, everything is sanitary and that nothing gets harmed in the food or anything like that for the for, for our guests because no one wants that. But, um, but yeah, I did get the permit and I was allowed to officially open a cat cafe. And we do have... Um, the 32 that we have now, we do have, we do take in more strays, and we do have an adoption program that we call the Ulu Cat Bay Rescute, um, which we did have one cat that we had rehabilitated, um, vetted, and made sure that they were good, and they were sent away to a new home. Actually, one of our community members that live in this community has Miss Haley now. Oh, Katie, that's like, that's like radical, man. Saving the cats yep. and just keeping the cycle going, man. Very, uh, a really nice story when it comes to, you know, where you are to now. Uh, this is like a topic, I'm not even gonna lie to you. I brought this up, uh, with actually Avery and Violetta, but I'm also gonna bring this up to you as well. Um, that you can give a, a strong opinion about. It's kind of funny that, like, you know, that, like, this... I would say like balance between you know females and males of owning and operating businesses on an owner and a management standpoint uh, in this city is actually pretty. Actually, I'm not even gonna lie to you. If I'm not like wrong, some brosies probably gonna correct me on this, but I think there's more female owners as of right now compared to males. I'm not even gonna lie to you. That's kind of yeah, it's, I think it's pretty awesome, dude. To be fair, like it's a good balance. You know what I mean? Uh, what's your What's your opinion on it? Of uh, you know, the female and uh, male uh, balance when it comes to uh, owners and management of uh, companies slash businesses. Um, well, I don't think it always necessarily has to do with w what gender you choose. Um, I think it's more so to do with like how much work you put in, how much ambition you show, how like, if you want something, put the footwork in and make it happen. Like, it might take a long time. You might get discouraged on the way. It might be a very, very long road. But if you keep going, great things happen. Like, if you, if you try. Um, with the, with the uh, female versus male situation in that, I don't, I don't, I mean, I think it's, I think everyone, if they want to open a business, they should open a business no matter, no matter what or who they are. Um, if you make it happen and you let people know that you're running a business or trying, get the word out there, put the footwork in, and also network because you'd be surprised if, by talking to someone if they have the exact thing that you need to help you or to help push you where you need to go. So don't be afraid to talk to people. That is a huge part of my suggestion as well. I had, um, I'm gonna rewind a little bit. Before, while I was working at Vineyard, I also worked at Armageddon Arcade Bar. It used to be a bar and arcade where I was a bartender there. And um, her name, we called her like, we call her Red. She owned Armageddon Cafe and she was basically like a mama to me. I loved that woman. Um, she taught me everything that I have known about like how to run a business, how to handle your guests or customers, how to um, be professional at all times, even if your guests may not be enjoying their time or if they think they're right, you just make sure you do what you can to make them feel, account feel comfortable and welcome. So I don't, without, so I guess, yeah, without her, I would probably not be where I am right now. Forgot about oh, yeah, that. of course, man. All right, dude. Uh, to bounce, uh, um, start flipping to the questions, uh, man. Uh, what is the future of Ulu Cafe? I know uh, recently I've been seeing, I saw, was it yesterday, that you did open up the uh, the food truck and parked it up in front of City Hall. Are you going to frequently start doing that more often? Because I know that's 
something I don't see frequently or uh, used, if that makes sense. Not to, like, you know, insult your... Uh, no, no, not whatsoever. insulting at all. So, my plan was to have the ice cream truck drive around, as well as having the restaurant open. Um, the, it is difficult with um, staff, and also with me trying to launch this new restaurant. We, um, I've never done a sit-down only restaurant, or helped manage a sit-down only restaurant. So when we started this, we got a lot of pushback. We, we were like, well, what do you mean? I can't just grab a drink and run. And I'm like, well, it's just, if you sit down, we'll get you taken care of as soon as we can. Please enjoy yourself. Take a minute, get off your feet. Um, so there was a lot of pushback with that. We didn't get too many customers. So there, I didn't have the staff or the time uh, to be able to launch both. Plus, I was still saving up money. Like right now, there are things I still need to purchase to make that more functional. Right now, I am the only one that has access to the ice cream truck. So if I am not around, my employees cannot get to it, which is unfortunate. So I'm still saving up money to get that a garage so that um, that hopefully will be changed soon and my employees will be able to take it out when they please. I just have to save up for that. But Ladies, yeah, the future uh, of it is... Sorry. I was, oh, no, <laughs> I was going to say, no, definitely. No, it makes sense, man. Uh, but yes. Yeah. Uh, to go back to the future stuff for everything else. Yeah, uh, so my plan was always have the ice cream truck and then, of course, have the restaurant here open a few days a week. Um, we, we are... Um, I'm working on, I've always done it for Cherry. We had a celebration package where we celebrate your birthday, a promotion at your work. You come or we go to the, the area that you would like. It, we cater. Um, we'll, we'll bring it to a park. We'll bring it to a house. We'll bring it to wherever you choose. Just let us know. And there's a package for different party sizes, depending on how many people you anticipate on joining. Um, we have a private room upstairs now here, too, that will also be available for people interested in... Um, the celebration package, um, which does include full um, setup and full takedown. We clean everything up, and we um, and anything that is left over, of course, you're welcome to take home, or we we um, bring it back for our staff, depending on if you because if, we don't waste food. So if it just happens to be too much, um, we do let them know we will take we will take any excess back for for staff to to eat and enjoy. Oh yeah, of course, man. But. Uh with that being said, dude, uh, do you have anything else you would like to, uh, you know, add or, you know, state to the broskies out uh, listening in and still probably continue to listen in throughout the whole podcast, man, which I greatly do appreciate for every broski that is watching it live and to all the broskies that are going to be listening to it, the pre-recording of it. I do appreciate you guys and the support, as always, man. Yeah. Um, well, I, I appreciate you asking me to be on the podcast with you. Um, I do. Um, the only thing I, I would like to share is um, Uwu is often hiring. Usually we're always hiring. So if anyone is interested in a job, um, please feel free to contact me. Um, I'm, I'm pretty friendly, I think, sometimes. <laughs> but yeah, I won't bite, I promise. Um, and we try to, I try to run Uwu as like we're a family. So I think I don't know. I have fun when I work here with with all of my co coworkers. I don't know. It's just it's a great time, and I hope that it does still become a place where people want to come and hang out, enjoy, relax, celebrate with their friends, meet people, network, everything like that. Brady dudes. With that being said, I'm gonna be reaching out to some of our sponsors. So I'm going to be explaining a little program that is uh, actually being uh, looked onto as of right now uh, for the city of Los Santos. It's, gonna, it's a program that is called uh, Program Department of uh, Treasury, which is pretty much from what I've gathered from it when I sat down with uh, two of the bros. I know one was Karen. I cannot remember the other one's name. I'm very sorry if I miss. I can't remember the name. I'm very sorry. I'm like, it's sorry, dude. It's just... You know, stone to the brain, man. But, yo, it, it's pretty much, from what I've gathered from it, it is a program that is helping to broskies that are, you know, taken hostage whatsoever. Which, of course, you know, I mean, it's a pretty freaking thing. I know most broskies that are, you know, my broskies probably know about it for me freakingly. 
And this is something that I think would be really nice because they actually will confiscate you uh, if you follow, if you are uh, reach for the uh, requirements, which I'll be listing off. Which is pretty much you have to cl you have to have a clean record for at least 30 days. You file the police report with a incident number, which the incident number you just gotta do is ask for the like once you are you know taken care of, you just ask for it and then. That and then you also have to get a medical uh, records with from the incident, so that's something that we just gotta look forward to more. From what I was told, they're gonna be you know making it super clear with that. That sounds awesome. <laughs> but yeah, dudes, and then uh, from what I said, and it's pretty much like one of those cases where like you know. And you can't receive any other compensation, but it's more of a sense of like the broskies are trying, the government itself with this new program are trying to help out broskies at, you know, taxi fees, you know what I mean, compensation of going to the doctors and stuff like that afterwards and all this stuff. That's pretty much what this is for. But yeah, dudes, um, yeah, just keep a lookout on that for that. I know there's probably been more campaigns on that probably recently more soon, so just keep an eye on that. But yeah, dudes, uh, with that being said, though, man, I would like to thank everyone for showing up to the live uh, feed of this wonderful, beautiful podcast for Daisy at Ulu Cafe. I appreciate you, Daisy, for taking the time to, you know, allow me to, you know, question you with your cats in the background with Miss Mittens and Miss Raven. And, you know, it's just how it goes, man. But yeah, dudes, uh, with that being said, man, if you guys are ever looking for me, man, you either look for me at the beach or look at me in the water, man. But yeah, man, you all have a wonderful day, dude. Peace and love, man. Like, deuces, man. It's like, see you later.